Hi there, I'm Vicki. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to make some faux leather paper. So what you would need is a grocery bag. You could use just brown craft paper. You want it maybe thick. You don't have to, it could be thinner, but you would have to just be more careful with it. So I don't have pause on my camera here, my phone. So I have to film this. I've gotten several stages of this done. So you take the paper bag and you just cut it out, find the seams and cut down the seams. And then you end up with this. Um, you want to use a large piece Depending on what you're going to, I'm making a, a cover, a book cover for my um, my next journal, uh, animals and mushrooms, wild, anyway. So I made one and it was too small. This will shrink. So I've watched several videos on how to do this. You can watch several, pick what you like best. Um, I, pr I preferred Pam at the Paper Outpost. Hers seemed to be the best. So you can either take your paper and just crunch it up. This may be kind of noisy. My last piece wasn't this big, so. but it was ended up being too small. Or you could wet it first. And then I, I made two already and I did it both ways. So just take a spray bottle, wet it up. We're gonna be doing a lot of crunching here. So you want it to be very crunched to get the lines You can't over mush it. No such thing. It's just, it would just have a different look. So we just crunch it and we smush it. And then we open it up. And if you have a plain piece, this is obviously from a grocery store. So you know what the front and back is. My piece, I did not know the first ones I did. It mattered, but it didn't matter, which you'll see as we go forward here. I don't know if there's a, if you can wet it too much. I don't think so. But we just wanna make sure we have ample crunchage in here. Okay, let's see where we're at. This is from, if you had a thinner piece of paper, like you can't buy it on rolls, like uh, um, packaging to wrap up packages to mail is thinner. It can rip. I mean, this is a thick one and it's ripping. I mean, you can be careful with it, of course, which you would if it was the thinner, but the thinner paper would work just as well. I just wanna make sure it's all wet. I mean, you can see the lines already. And the thing is, when it dries, it won't be all flat. It'll be all, it'll be wrinkled. Okay, so I scrunched it up. Okay, here's where two different videos did two different things. Pam, in her video, I think, shoot, I watched the videos and I can't remember. Okay, what we're going to do to make this soft is we're going to put hair conditioner. Any hair conditioner will work. I feel like, okay, Pam inked it first, 
and then put the conditioner. Another video, she put the conditioner and then inked. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put the conditioner on now because I don't have my ink out here. I have some of it, I just don't have it all. So I'm gonna put the uh, conditioner on. A generous amount is fine because I thought I had too much. I'm like, oh no, that's too much. And I dabbed it off, but then I rewatched the video, <laughs> all the things I've missed, and she used a lot. We're just gonna rub this in, and this will make your um, paper pliable, and soft and uh, smooth, velvety feeling. I'm going to go as far to the edges as I can, even though I know I'm not going to use all the way to the edges, but you never know. So be prepared. So we're going to just rub this in. It would have been nice if I'd have brought over a towel or something to wipe my hands on. I was as prepared as I could be. I mean, I've never, I'm out in my kitchen. I've never done a video out here before. That's why I'm on my countertop. I didn't even put anything down. Oh, I didn't think I needed to. So I'm just gonna crunch this back up. Now, I don't think you wanna let it dry like this. And I don't know that anyone did. You're gonna wanna just lay it aside and let it dry. Let's just smooth that back. I don't know what that would do. That's uncharted territory right there. And it, it, I would let it dry for hours till it's really, really dry. Now, where, where am I gonna put this? Hmm. Here. Grab a towel to wipe my hands on. I didn't think about all that. Okay, now I have the piece I inked. Okay, you just take your ink and just, but when you're doing your initial inking, your ink's gonna be wet and you're gonna start with your browns. I have vintage photo. I think I used ground espresso as well. And then I added that, um, picked raspberry. But you can see it looks a little too dark, but now that it's dry, um, well, it doesn't matter for the brown, but if you have it wet and you rub this over, you can get it on your ink pad. I mean, it's kind of on there now. So I would next time try a cotton ball. Yes, you can do that. So that you don't, and then just switch sides so you don't get, you know, that on there. So, I wanted to knock that back. I felt like that was just a little too pink. So, I'm going to put some more of this on there. Let me get my roll of wax paper over here. This is my wax paper that I have used, or parchment paper, I think it is. When I dye paper... I put it on here and spritz it. Then I roll it up on a roll. Sorry for the noise. Then I can do that. There we go. There's the water. And the ink pad. There we go. And I can just kind of go over the pink again. So that it's not as pink. Now, if you had another, some of it looked burgundy. I'm not sure what reds they put in there, but, you know, I only have so much ink for me pads, so. Use what you have, you know what they say. Okay. This is what Pam did. She did her inking. 
and then she put that on it. So while the ink was wet, and you're gonna think, well, is it gonna mess it up? Nope, it might even help make it better. Okay, this will be a little darker than what I had, so. This, I think, already had a layer of uh, conditioner on it. So, can't remember. But I think I conditioned it first. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna do that much. Well, let's wet it down. Okay. Then we're just gonna rub this on here. I would say the more heavier you put this on, the more pliable and soft it's gonna be. And it kind of pushes your ink around to make it, uh, more, a little bit more color inside the, uh, where your raised pieces are. Now, do I think that's enough? No. I'm going for more. Not much, just a little. It felt a little light around the edges. I don't know what I'll do with this piece. This was gonna be for my book cover, but <laughs> Woodland Journal, wood, Woodland Creatures and Mushroom Journal. And then I realized, oh, it's too small. So there, it does shrink up from what you start with to what you end up with. And I wanna make sure I have enough to um, get to the edge, you know, cause I wanna fold the edges under and this, that, and the other. So when that dries, it's gonna look good. Let me wipe off my hands. So there are full videos where they do start to finish. They pause, dry their piece, come back, work on it some more. I just have several pieces. So we'll just move that aside. And in the end, you're gonna put, um, uh, what is that? Hmm. Um, that, clear stuff like glue, Mod Podge, <laughs> right there, Mod Podge. You're gonna put a layer, I did a pretty generous layer. This one already has the Mod Podge on it. I used some blues or greenish colors. It was supposed to be a bluish color, but this is what this one came out like. And you can see it's very soft. This is the, what the end product should be. The coloring would be based on what inks you use. So this is the end product of the faux leather. And like I said, there are several videos you can watch. Some people don't wanna use the hair conditioner. They use glycerin. I don't know how glycerin is sold, how it comes, but you know, I think this is good because I don't know any better. So this is how to do the faux leather paper from a paper bag. And I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you'll try it, whichever method you use. If you wanna check out other videos, that's fine too. So thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.